Hey guys, this is Matt with 4hydroponics.com and today we're going to be taking a look at some of the different carbon filters we sell and talking about how they work. So first we'll talk about how carbon filters work. Um, carbon has a lot of surface area and as smelly air moves over it, um, it actually bonds with the carbon um, and the carbon basically traps it there. It doesn't actually absorb into the carbon, it's called adsorb, where it just bonds with the carbon. Um, some things that can affect how that happens is humidity and temperature. Um, when smell and odor molecules come into the filter, when they're hotter, they have more energy. And energy would mean it'd be harder for that carbon to grab it as it moves through. On top of that, humidity actually coats carbon. So if you have a large spill in your room or you just watered heavily, you might notice that your carbon filter is not working as well it's because the humidity actually coats that carbon and has that makes it harder for that carbon to grab those odor molecules those volatile oils those aerosols um, and that being said as soon as that carbon dries back out it will go right back to what it was doing so it doesn't ruin it by any means it's just as it's being as it's humid it won't work as well um, so the differences in some of the carbons that you see in different companies um, can makes two different versions they make a newer model and what we would consider maybe an older model older style the older styles have a great reputation for lasting forever um, they're, they've been around in this industry for a really long time. They used a pelletized form of carbon, which is extruded basically through almost like a pasta machine kind of thing where it just gives you the same exact density compression pellet every single time. And these pellets are basically lined up in here. Um, that can be a good thing and a bad thing. I think it adds longevity, but it might not scrub odor just as well. Um, but they really do a good job. I really recommend it for a, a beginner gardener or just if you want to see the difference, try one just to see if it gives you a little bit longer life for the same capabilities. Um, but the newer models are using more of a granular carbon um, versus this pelletized form. Um, can makes a granular carbon filter and Fresh was kind of the innovator in it and they have a really awesome uh, form of carbon that they source from Australia. This is also Australia's carbon. I'm not sure if it's the exact same source, um, but they are both are Australian carbon. Um, each gram of the carbon that's in these uh, fresh filters um, has a surface area of two football fields. So it's insane how much they actually can scrub for the amount of carbon that's in here. Um, and the longevity on them is going to be based on use, on airflow, um, and obviously what uh, the, this actual amount of volatile oils that they've actually had to filter. Um, they accumulate weight over the course of their lifetime and that's how you can kind of gauge how old they are, maybe weigh it when it starts and if you think it's going out on you, you can weigh it. They'll add about a third of its original weight, so that's a great way to kind of test where it's at. And at that point, it's become spent. Um, with the granular carbon, I would throw my carbon in my flower beds or into my lawn. With the pelletized carbon, you only probably want to put it in carbon into, uh, sorry, into flower beds or to containers. Don't throw it in your yard because when you mow your yard, you'll have like pellets flying everywhere. So, uh, but it still has a, gr it's a great to add into flower pots, uh, outdoor container beds and into your grass uh, when you are spent and then the aluminum in here can be just scrapped. So that's a great uh, tip on how to dispose of them. Um, once, like, like I said, the longevity is dependent on how they're used, how long they're used, and what capacity they're used. Now how to size one for your room is a question we get asked a ton and it's pretty simple. You want to figure out the amount of air um, that you're trying to move in that room through uh, figuring out your air exchange rate, which is basically your cubic feet multiplied by three to five, depending on how much you want to move. Once you figure out that number, let's say it's a 500 CFMs, you want to find the filter that comes closest to that number um, and match it with the fan that comes closest to that number. Um, it, you do have some differential in there. You can go 150 to 200 either way, a little over, a little under. But if you get closer to 3 to 500 either way, you'll start causing issues with the way the filter is working. It'll only want to pull in on certain parts of the filter and it just does not work optimally. The filters themselves work on pressure. So when you have this, the proper fan push, uh, pressurizing it, the odor gets absorbed or the air gets pulled through the filter evenly, which is what we want. So that's why you don't want to use a fan or filter that's way you know, uh, underdone or overdone for uh, each other. Um, like I said before, uh, CAN makes a version of the granulated carbon, the CAN lights. They're awesome filters, super light. That same really high quality carbon uh, material, um, not pelletized, granular. 
Um, they both have built-in flanges. Um, the older model cans um, have actual flange kits that you can put on here so you can actually change what filter fan combos you're running depending on what you need to do, which is kind of nice, but you still want to base it on CFM. Um, and uh, yeah, they're great for odor control. They're great for keeping uh, you know moldy basement smelling better. They clean particulate out of the air. Um, they also you know in the winter time if you're in a cold weather state, if you're you know gardening inside and you want to blow that warm clean air into your house, it's a great way to freshen up your house with clean air as well as. Um, keep your basement dry, keep your house dry, and heat your home. In the summertime, you can. Uh, this allows you to dump your garden air outside without offending anyone, um, and that's always good. Um, so yeah, uh, some of the tips there, you know, you can put these on the ground, um, you can put them uh, up on the uh, ceiling. I'd recommend getting them high, because that's where a lot of the hot, smelly air accumulates. So getting them off the ground is nice, also saves floor space, but in a pinch, or in a dry room, or in a smelly room, basement, you can put it on the floor with a fan right on top of it, and let it just go. Um, it does not have to be used as only an exhaust, it can just be as a scrubber. It can be on the ceiling with a fan and a small piece of ducting attached and the air is basically just getting scrubbed over and over again in the same room, keeping the odor down. Um, that's usually used in rooms that use CO2 where you don't want to be exhausting all your good stuff outside or rooms that have AC units where you don't want to be exhausting all your cold air outside. You're going to be using these as scrubbers. And the CFMs, you can probably get away with even a little bit more differential in that scenario, but still really, really close to that same rate. Just try to match them as about as close as possible. Um, so I hope some of that stuff helped you guys out. Uh, last but not least, you can actually blow through these and versus suck through these, and a lot of people wonder that. It doesn't make any difference. The only thing I would say if you're going to uh, blow through them, depending on what filter you have, if, if possible, take the pre-filter from here and tuck it into the inside. That'll help keep some of that dust and dirt out of the filter and make it last longer just the way it does right now while it's on the outside when we're drawing through it. Um, so that's a great tip. And then last, I would say if you have a filter that's just way too big for the fan but the flange is right and you want to run it in a smaller space than you were anticipating you can actually saran wrap half the fan and that will completely restrict any flow to that part of the carbon and that will actually cut your CFM of that filter in half so if it was a 100 CFM fan just for example if you wrapped half in saran wrap it would now be a 50 CFM carbon filter you could now run it with a 50 CFM fan and that's all you had after that half of the carbon was spent you could wrap that spent part in plastic and now use the other half, which is a great tip if you have something like that laying around. Um, and then here we're going to talk just a tiny bit. You want to also move a lot of air around in your room. It helps for more stable plants, more rigid plants, um, healthier plants, less pests, less mold. They don't like being blown all over the place. We really recommend these Hurricane fans. We also have the Durabreeze in stock. Um, they're both really good fans. Three speed, drawstring, wall mount. It keeps them off the floor, keeps them out of the path of a lot of that dust and dirt, and also keeps you with your floor space. Um, so I hope this video helped you out. All this stuff's available on our website and a ton more. A lot of different filters and fan combos, setups, deals, specials. Come check us out. I hope this video uh, clears some of that stuff up, and we'll see you next time.